bar. <laughs> I wish there, there was a bar right I know. here. <laughs> so, um, first of all, um, I would really say this was a, a, a quite an a, a accomplished reading, and I would like to say thank you again for the director and the North Theatre Company. <laughs> and again, um, thank you, Kim, and, <coughs> and everyone. Um, we went a little bit over time, not too much, but uh, I would like to ask uh, Marvin. Uh, first, Marvin is a professor of theater, a distinguished professor of theater here. He is actually for over 30 years the uh, editor of Western European Stages, now European Stages, but um, one of your uh, strong interests, and also as a leading scholar in the world, is uh, theater from the Arab world. Um, you have an overview of world theater, American theater, European theater, but also Arab theater. Where does uh, well, uh, uh, thank you, Frank. Uh, I, I, I'll be brief because really I have less expertise than anybody else here, uh, either professionally or, or, uh, or academically as far as this work is concerned. <laughs> but let me only say that uh, uh, Wanus is one of the the major undiscovered treasures of world literature I, he is has been for some time now several decades generally recognized throughout the arab world as the leading if not one of the two or three leading modern arabic dramatists uh, and it's quite remarkable that given that fact he up until the present has been virtually unknown in the West and, and not, uh, not available except in, in very small snippets. So uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the discovery of him and the, and the presenting of him to a wider audience is, is, is really long overdue and, and, and should be much appreciated by everybody. Um, Having said that very general thing, I guess I would say that uh, the other thing that I, I would remark about about Wanus's work in general, and this and this work I think in particular, uh, is that uh, uh, it's a, not only is it a, obviously a very rich and complex wor work in terms of uh, of, of the motivation and interaction of the characters, uh, who are some of the most interestingly textured characters that I know, uh, it it really stands out. It seems to me uh, in in uh, among modern drama and among modern Arabic drama in particular, because of the uh, uh, of the uh, richness and intensity. Uh, an ambiguity of of uh, of the motivations, uh, particularly in sexual matters. Uh, uh, one of the things that that uh, uh, to me at least characterizes much of the Arab drama, much more uh, not only the modern Arab drama but the Arab drama in generally, much more than the Western drama is that it is a drama that traditionally uh, has focused in, in significant measure on uh, either open or, or indirect political messages. It's a very engaged theater. Here, there is political manipulation, but the political manipulation is really subordinated, as it rarely is in the Arab theater, to uh, personal matters and particularly sexual matters. Uh, somebody asked me a few weeks ago, uh, 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 we're, look, we're putting together an anthology of essays about uh, homosexual uh, drama in the modern world. What, do you th what could we use for the Arab theater? Well, this play immediately came to mind, but then I fell into the abyss. Uh, the, the, this play is really very unusual in, in, in its explicitness and the power of its portrayal of sexuality. Uh, 
uh, it, it's, it's more open about that than a lot, of the, a lot of the modern drama is, even in the Western world. And so it, this is both a very significant play and a very special and unique play. And just as Wanus is a very special author and in some ways almost a unique author. So, yeah, and full of surprises. And full of surprises, <laughs> right. So um, Anada and, uh, and Robert, you both um, worked on this. Nada, tell us a bit, how, how did you collaborate? How was the translation process? Well, <laughs> we had experiences in translation of plays before we, we translated two other plays before, but they were less complex and they were short, shorter. So we had already built a rapport between us. We already knew how we worked together. And so we decided that we wanted to go to another, you know, more complex play. Now, this play in particular was very challenging because it is rooted in Arab literary heritage. What was probably, and, and you know, was what, what was not very clear here was the mystical component that puts together all the threads of the, uh, of the play. And probably that was uh, the contribution that we tried to do, which was to link... Um, the characters and the underlying thoughts that were there to the heritage. They are not as, uh, I mean, uh, a reader who would know um, Arabic culture would be able to see these nuances. And I think what, what Robert was trying to do as well was, you know, I would tell him that these are the tricks that are going on. These are the um, nuances. And this is how this specific incidence or this specific character or this specific term works within the literary heritage, what he would do was try to transform it into what he feels would be equally sensitive to a Western audience. Now, we found a very nice uh, um, meeting between a Shakespearean and the Sufi kind of experience. And this is what we try to, to put together, because obviously there is a Shakespearean element there, and there is a mystical Sufi component there. And I think this kind of marriage was, was uh, created through, through our collaboration. Which would also be a wonderful description on a New York theater poster, Sufi Shakespearean. <laughs> But um, Robert, t tell us, what were the uh, uh, complexities? What did, what did you wrestle with, you both, for this uh, translation? Well, the strange sort of diglossic nature of Arabic is such that people speak one language on the street, and most of theater is in a, a much more rarefied language. Um, that, uh, there are sort of two ways that it became very interesting for us to try to find a register in English that worked. One is that um, Nada and Sahar, when she directed it, and a number of other people um, whose Arabic is better than mine, constantly pointed out to the uh, pointed to the fact that uh, Wanus's Fusha, his modern standard or very formal Arabic, feels as if it's inflected by Amie, by colloquial. And in fact, um, uh, Wanus confided to Elias Khouri, the the um, a writer that he would write his plays in Amie, in the colloquial, and uh, translate himself into Fusha. And so it has a feel that's much more like dialogue. And so what we tried to do was, instead of anything sounding as if it were a speech, which is a great danger in general, um, is to make it as dialogic as possible. In other words, people are saying these words to someone, and even if it is rarefied, uh, Shakespeare and others, but principally Shakespeare in the English-speaking world, has taught us that it's possible to actually speak uh, in poetry and yet have it feel like dialogue. So we tried to find a kind of, <coughs> excuse me, 19th century English is kind of where we ended up, which is where, where the, um, the place set in 1880. Yeah, and I think it, it does work, and uh, I, I think and, um, the play was done as the first play in repertoire at the uh, Comédie Française of an Arab playwright, which is, of course, a, 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 a big milestone for any writer, but especially, of course, for a writer from the Arab world. And, um, and um, so, Sahar, you directed uh, um, 
look in Beirut. Right. And um, we, I think we have a couple of clips, I think two or three, which we can show. But tell us uh, uh, maybe what is your reaction? <coughs> you, you saw the reading here. How, and then tell us a bit about your work in Beirut. Well, uh, first of all, thank you for the reading. It was fantastic, really. Uh, I, I, with the time that you had, you did an excellent job, Kim. Really wonderful. Uh, so in Beirut, it was um, Robert's gift to me. I always say that because for me to direct this play, as uh, you know, I'm I'm still an emerging director. I think of myself. And Robert came to me and uh, last year, and he said, "I'm working on this play with Nada. Would you like to direct this play?" And I was like, "Yes, let's do it." And I didn't know then, you know, <laughs> the the complexities and all the troubles that I'm getting myself into, <laughs> but uh, it worked, and we we were able to do it in a um, in a short period of time, actually, we had two months of rehearsals, and the main challenge was that, yeah, yeah, well, two months with the, a cast of 30 people, we're talking about a two hour and a half play. Uh, most of my cast were students. We got some funds, thanks to Robert, who functioned as a producer. We got some funds so we could afford to bring in some professional actors and designers on board. But yeah, it was two months, and we performed for only four nights, and it was. <coughs> Full house, so it was at uh, you know at all levels. I think it was um, really a very um, you know rich experience. One of the one of the things is that uh, Beiruti audiences, for instance, are not used to a long play to long plays like two hours. You don't see this in the theaters in Lebanon. And people, we we decided at one point, me and Robert, that we're not going to have an intermission. So it was two hours twenty minutes exact, and people would not fudge in the auditorium like. Every night we had two, three people leaving the house, but that was it. And uh, I mean, this tells you a lot about the... Yeah, why don't we look at a, a couple of clips there, short, like two <coughs> minutes, uh, two, three minutes. Maybe you can talk over a little bit, explain us what we see. We maybe just look over Definitely, our shoulders. Uh, we, but yeah. people were la laughing here while Brad is setting this up, but people were laughing. Is, were these the same laughter? So you, is it a universal reaction? Some lines, it? yes, absolutely. But, uh, you know, in some cases in Lebanon, like I, I remember this very vividly in the scenes with the, homose the, the, the homosexual the scene, the, the, the two... Uh, uh, Afsa and Abbas scene, uh, when, Ab when Afsa comes to this scene, actually. When Afsa... Uh, You've changed yourself can, into can you this, hear this because of your love for me. Don't make me cry with fans. So this scene in the auditorium, again. people will be really laughing at first. You like, you can tell it's nervous laugh, but then when it gets intense, sure. suddenly the Did auditorium will transform and people will be uh, silent. I thought to myself, how can I please my beloved? So who was so the I audience? Was, we had done in English, English the reading. Who was the audience? Who came? That well, university students, the some theater goers in Lebanon, English speaking yeah, mainly. We had some journalists, right, Robert? Here's my gift to you. What is it? Well, we had... Uh, <laughs> Four shows with 300 people, so it was pretty diverse. <laughs> uh, but you know, uh, it had to be people who um, spoke yeah, English well enough. Yes, to, you can announce it to the entire city now. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can go to the, the next uh, scene, the next clip. But uh, so how? We can show the end of this. What has happened? Yeah. I was afraid the... you desert me after I exposed my my soul. As those whose appearance was different from their from their from their reality. You can skip well, a little bit more to the uh, rest, arm resting. And I'll back you up. Don't cut off what's between Is us. He performed uh, in, in, in Arab language. I don't know what I do with my life. Uh, if our relationship This play in particular. Yeah. It was actually produced uh, in 96 with Nidal Ashar. And we have someone in the auditorium who worked on it, actually. The first Arabic production of the day. Lina Abyad and when I came That's my final decision. Right? Do not demean yourself even more. Yeah, yeah, it, was, it, was, it was in 96. Was there nothing? 96. When Nidal Ashar in Medina Theatre was with the, while Manus was still alive. And Ma Mazen here, who's the one without his shirt, uh, he spoke with a very southern accent. I'm from the American South, and I went, have you been there? And he went, no, I'm in a, a kind of punk southern band in Beirut. So he spoke. <laughs> You know, and then our mufti was from uh, New Zealand, so we had Englishes across the spectrum, which was actually 
Mm -hmm. Absolutely fascinating, I must say. Lebanese English is from the diaspora and uh, different levels. It was very interesting. But tell us a bit about your work at the university. What do you do there? I know you are a professor there, and uh, tell us a bit about the setup. And well, the American University of Beirut is uh, uh, probably uh, the best university in the Arab-speaking world. Uh, it's uh, been around since 1860. I uh, I uh, teach playwriting, I teach uh, dramatic literature, I teach literature, and you know, I've had a few opportunities to work with uh, people from there, Jawad al Asadi. Uh, we translated uh, a play um, uh, by him that uh, the New York Theater Workshop did up at Dartmouth, and uh, Sishan did uh, down at La Mama. And then uh, uh, to work with uh, Sahar here was like, unlike any experience I've had there. Um, I think suddenly there's a recognition how central theater is in this sort of, uh, in the scheme of things and in the humanities. And it's one of the few institutions that's not very technically oriented, even though there are a lot of pre-med students and engineering students. Uh, liberal arts is considered to have intrinsic value and, and there's a recognition that theater is part of that. And Nada should just say a word or two about her institution, which is just down the street and, yeah, yeah. and is now working more closely. Yes, um, I teach at the Lebanese American University, and uh, I teach literature, Arabic literature and comparative literature there. And we have a very strong communication arts department, which has also drama studies in it. And two of our professors are here also, Dr. Munak Nio and Dr. Bina Um We do try to collaborate together. and. Um, our students are very active in that respect. And um, we also have visitors who, who come, so LAU is very open to, to dramatic work. We, we hosted you also a couple of weeks ago, and um, you graciously accepted our invitation, gave a wonderful lecture there. So yes, LAU is very active with respect to drama studies. We have a very good theater there. And um, you know, LAU itself is very open to everything that goes around in, in the, with respect to drama studies and internationally as well. It's trying to, you know, rise. It's not AUB yet, but it's trying to become, you know, not second to AUB. So, um, yeah, th Wonderful. this is LAU. Um, Lamise, um, yeah. um, maybe you tell us a bit about the North Theater, the work you do. And uh, I know how busy you are, how much you all do, but you said uh, we would like to do, but be part of this reading. <coughs> how do you see this work? How does it speak to you? I, it's, I think it's stunning. And I think you guys have done an extraordinary job. And everyone, basically what we did was, um, these guys came to us and said, would you present this reading? And you know, Robert, Nada, and Sahar are coming. So I said, yeah, and I grabbed Kim. I asked Kim to direct it. And we, we assembled this lovely group of actors and we asked Hadi to come play Aoud. And Frank kept saying, Look, we're going to give you 30 minutes. I was like, say what? 30 minutes? Give us 45. And I actually don't, I think we did more than that. <laughs> because it's so rich and it's, there are so many wonderful scenes. As, as Nada was talking about, the, the Sufi sort of theme that is beautifully thread throughout, which you did not see. You um, can see a little bit. <laughs> yes, you can see it here. This is, uh, which we had to sort Maybe of. Maybe tell a bit about the scene. Uh, yeah, um, go ahead. Please. So this is the scene where Abdullah transforms totally into a Sufi. This is his first, his second actually encounter with the guide. And the guide was also missing, I think, from the reading here yep. today. So this is Abdullah, the husband of Mu'mina. Uh, as after he divorces Mu'mina, he becomes a Sufi. He's on his path to becoming illuminated and totally in love with God. And this is a scene at his house with a, a circle of devotees and the guide appears. The guide, at point, you, you get the feeling that the guide is the, his father. He speaks to him as a father, but then the guide, Nada can speak more about the guide and uh, the presentation of the guide and Sufi. Uh, yeah, but we have the book. You can read it. Absolutely. You can get it free. It's $30 normally, which already is a sensational price. But this good, but please do go on a bit about. Yes. Uh, the well, so uh, you know, we had we we were challenged by this task of presenting only forty five minutes when there are so many beautiful threads and it's so rich and sort of having to choose and getting some really great feedback from Sahad and Nada and Robert and going, okay, what do we want to present? How can we do this? So th that part was a real challenge, um, but an exciting one. And for Noor, um, Nancy, uh, Nancy is over here. She's the, produ the producing artistic director, and Maha's the executive. Um, director, and we co-founded the company to present and develop the work of artists of Middle Eastern descent. And so far, our community has really been 
uh, art artists in the diaspora from all over. And so when we get to be invited to participate in work from the Middle East and new translations, it's really exciting for us because it's a learning process for us. And we get to be surrounded by experts and people who are, know this work and you guys educate us. And so then we can sort of bring our people into it and um, um, you know, have that edifying experience. So it's really astonishing. And, and that's what we want to continue doing. And there are a group of fantastic women here. Raise your hands, y'all. There's a lot of the cat. Really? That's all? This is good. <laughs> um, so the, the, a lot of people came in for this wonderful conference of Middle Eastern theater women that Catherine Couré has assembled. So it's, this is what we're trying to do, is, is establish these connections so that we can be a part of work like this. As an honest question, how would this play? Could that be shown on a New York stage? I would think, people come? I uh, think they would. I think it's astonishing. I think, um, I, I think the the transformation of Almasa. I think uh, the the themes of homosexuality and revealing who you are. What you guys were talking about in rehearsal about inside and the outside matching. I think there are so many poignant things that happen that are very current actually in this work. And so to see it coming from the Middle East. We're going to connect to it. I think one of our actors, Peter, was saying, you know, the moment that Afsa kills himself after he's revealed himself, well, how much of that bullying and that pain do we see in the sort of with a lot of gay teenagers right now? There are so many different ways to connect the work, but that's just one of them. Um, and I, I absolutely think so. I think it would be a great challenge and really interesting I, for New York. I think the, the the gender relationships as as the, as as the wife is is seeking to define herself and to react to this 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 very rigid patriarchal world that also is something that seems Absolutely well rare. that's the other thing you know women women sort of really mm -hmm. I mean as women female members of this audience how you connected to Elmasa and hearing mm -hmm. some of the words she spoke about Liberating. Did that sort of resonate with you all in some? So it, it was. It is only forty-five minutes of two and a half hour plays. But maybe Brad, you put up uh, some light of the audience. You already um, asked already the asked question. The questions of, um, and the um, so uh, maybe we go to you. If you, we, we're going to give a microphone not only so we can hear you better, but also um, we, it is recorded. And um, if there are some hands up, I'm just going to count them. This is uh, one and two. Another question is three. And four, and we start uh, over here with Mario Fratti, a playwright. It's a, it's a great, powerful play. I, I, fantastic. I love it. Great characters. <laughs> so did President Assad allow this kind of theater? Yes, of course. He did? Yes, it played. It did? played in Damascus for several nights. And it was not censored, I must add, in Beirut. It was. We made self-censorship. The Mufti was not called the Mufti in Beirut. He was called Sheikh. That's cool. But in Syria, it played fully in Damascus. However, it played later on in Aleppo. And someone came to the Mufti of Aleppo and said, you know, you know, there is this play, and so and so is played there. So it was the Mufti who banned it, the Mufti of, um, of Aleppo. But no, the Assads did not. It played you know, in Damascus, and there was no problem That's there. That's good news about uh, <laughs> yeah. Damascus. Which was number two? Was over there, here, uh, over there. Thank you for the whole presentation. Um, so from a feminist perspective, or at least mine, and from a post modern perspective, I think it's, it's pretty easy to flow with Almasa towards prostitution. What puzzled me was her accepting to go with the Mufti. So I'm wondering what you all would say about, I mean, I know we're getting a short version of the play, but how do you understand that after this has been about the fact that her desire hasn't heard that women's desires are put aside for men's, when he wants it and comes the second time, why does she um, acquiesce to, or why does she even seem to want that also? Uh, oh, okay, my feel. He, she doesn't marry him. I think she just includes him into her, her sea. I don't. You know, she talks about being an expanded sea, and I think it's part of her experience and sort of allowing him to experience his body. This is not about her being owned by him or owning him or marrying him. Correct? Yes. The way we thought of it when we were doing the character analysis is that she actually helps him to transform. Yeah. Like the guide helped the Abdullah, you know, totally connect with God, she is helping him to connect with his inner person. You know, he's never been in touch with himself. 
No. She's surf no. serving, serving the person, serving him as a human being, human. transform and get in touch with love. He's never experienced love. He becomes like a child at the end of the play, really like a child, very vulnerable. And this for a Mufti to become really vulnerable with, and as, as Lamy said, I think you're absolutely correct that she's not about being, you know, being with him or for him. It's about helping him come out. Well, one thing that uh, Nanda helped me to understand is it's a connection I knew a little bit about from, you know, Santa Teresa is that mystic poetry and, and Sufism is about the ineffable. And a transformation into something that doesn't exist yet is to attempt to create a language about something that is not there. And she does say uh, to him at that moment, perhaps I mistook my desire for this. She is in the process of finding out what that desire is. And as Sahar is saying, it's a very small part of it that she has the generosity to help others transform. Uh, by then, she's clearly the powerful figure uh, and it's a play which is called, you know, Rituals and Signs of Transformation. Mm -hmm. It's all about transformation. And uh, Wanus, who was dying of cancer at the time, said he was writing it for his daughter. Um, so it's kind of a gift to, you know, you make it up. You make up the next chapter. So I think it has something to do with ineffability. There's not a language yet for what it is I want to be. Yeah. So it's a play about becoming. Well, to, fo to follow that up, it, 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 uh, it is not a transformation into something else that is equivalent. It, it is, and you see this in, in uh, the, I think it becomes clearer if you, if you factor Abdullah and his conversion yeah. into it. It is a letting go. It is a, uh, it's kind of a via negativa that that it, it's getting rid of all of this other stuff, not to replace it with something else, but just to get rid of it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you have also to think of the uh, representation of the Mufti in that sense. I mean, the Mufti, she's trans helping to transform the ultimate authority. He's the, uh, the representation of the patriarchal society. So she's ch changing <coughs> all of this at once. Mm -hmm. So we had two more. Who was number three up there? Okay, wait for the microphone, please. Uh, it's about the the word transformation. Uh, why uh, you didn't uh, uh, use uh, metamorphosis? Because it's not a transformation. It's a kind of almasa uh, 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 became another one and. Mm -hmm. She made that transformation to become another woman, another uh, 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 human being, or more than that. I like the term metamorphosis, and I am one of the tra uh, translator of Wanus into French. Mm. And we use that word. Instead of transformation, it was metamorphosis. Did you see the uh, Paris production then? Yes, yes, we, can you uh, tell us a bit we about published it in uh, Act Sud. Yeah, I, we, we have three. the edition up there, but can you tell us a bit how the Paris, how the no, Paris I didn't see it. You did not see it, okay, thank you. Yeah, maybe you could. I saw it in France at the uh, Comédie Française. Yeah, can you tell us a bit? Well, it, it was, um, it was interesting, it was exotic, it was, uh, um, big. <laughs> um, the director was um, from um, Kuwait, yes, and um, and the reception was really interesting from the audience. But uh, there were two kinds of re of reception. The French liked it more than the Arabs who saw it. They thought that uh, it was more like too much Orientalism into it. The way it was directed. There's an oriental so that, realism, yeah. Mm. Yeah. It, it so, did, doesn't but it was, feel in, like in terms of visuality, it was beautiful. Uh, so, yeah. There's one more question behind, or? 
there was another question. Fortunately, we couldn't afford to be exotic. <laughs> <laughs> Is there one more question? Yeah, okay. Oh, no, thank you. So um, I think we, we went a bit over time, and we still have a, a little reception plan here, and I hope you will stay and maybe ask uh, uh, this uh, fabulous group of truly experts and artists and producers. Again, thank you for, for, for uh, coming uh, from uh, Beirut, uh, really, for this evening for Marvin Carlson to have the idea to do the translations, to create the book, to support it and also to the uh, MacArthur Foundation and Robert, all your work, and of course also the great North Theater and Kim's uh, production. I thought it was a great evening, a great start. So, um, and thank you all for coming out and uh, taking time out of your busy life. It's important to have good theater, but it's important to have a really good audience. And we're just, uh, this is wonderful to have uh, you all with us tonight. So thank you all, and I hope you will come back. Thank you.